What's going on guys? So it is an absolutely beautiful day outside and I'm trying to get as much stuff done out here as possible because it's just a gorgeous day. It's one of those days you want to be outside. But I thought while I was out here I could make a quick video talking to you about, you know, a really big concern people have had ever since I started showcasing this Palomino Paws. And that is the price. You know, this unit carries an MSRP uh, above $150,000. And you know, part of that is because of how this thing's constructed and what it's equipped with. But then the other part of it is understanding how this is actually designed and built. So whenever you see a conventional fifth wheel like our Brookstone over there, you know, in today's economy, that Brookstone would probably, as equipped with the generator up front, the washer and dryer inside of it, plus all the other upgrades, um, if you also included things like the upgraded tires, disc brakes and all that, it would probably have an MSRP of about $135,000. Typical sale price would probably be closer to about 90 to 100,000, which is far more expensive than I ever thought a unit like this would be um, because of COVID, right? COVID pricing made everything spike up really, really high. And a big part of that was just supply chain shortages, staffing shortages, the reduced number of RVs that were actually able to be built during that time because of labor shortages and all these other things that took place. Plus the huge inflation of parts and components that were being imported as well as stuff even manufactured here in the States. Because if a manufacturer like, you know, Asdell or, you know, some of the other components that are in here, if they also experience cost increases, they're going to pass those cost increases on to the manufacturer of the RV who assembles their units with those parts. The purpose of today's video is to talk about why a unit like this can have an MSRP as high as it is and where some of those costs actually lie in a unit like this. So let's talk about that. Hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, so again, Palomino Paws is a 2023 unit. Um, I first showcased these at the Elkhart Dealer Show uh, in Elkhart, Indiana. And uh, yeah, they were a huge hit. A lot of folks really, really liked what they saw. And I think most people anticipated that the price of these things was gonna be well in excess of $100,000. And you know, whenever you look at something like this and you compare it to the industry norm for you know a unit that's roughly 25 feet long, it's, it's definitely well and above the price tag of most RVs, even if you compare this to something like an Airstream. And I think that a lot of folks have a perception when it comes to how an RV is built, the components that they use, that it needs to fall into a certain price category. So a lot of people look at this price and they scoff at it. They go, there's absolutely no way that is worth that amount. And you know, terms like worth and value, those are all subjective. Those are all things that you may personally not think something is worth a certain amount and somebody else absolutely think it's a steal. A lot of Raptor pickup trucks sell or TRX pickup trucks sell or Porsches and Ferraris and all these other types of you know, high-end vehicles or specialty vehicles, they sell for well, well above what most people would be willing to pay, what most people would be even justified in paying, and what most people can afford to pay. But there are people who buy them every single day, and there are people who are willing to be on waiting lists to get one simply because it accomplishes what they want it to accomplish for them, and that's their value. So, you know, you may be uh, the type of person that wants a base model F-150 two-wheel drive with a V6, and you're like, that's the perfect truck for me. I'm going to beat it up. I'm going to use it as a work truck. I really don't care. I just want the cheapest, most uh, effective, efficient thing for me. And somebody else may look at that truck and say, I'd never drive that. I want to get something that's $120,000 equipped with all of this other stuff because that's the type of truck I want to own. And there's, you know, buyers and consumers in both categories. So, Again, I can't really be the one to say I don't want to show a product because it's too expensive because I don't know what value people find in that product that I may not see. So again, so if you ever question why I'm showing something and you may see this as being outside of your specific reach, it doesn't mean that there's not buyers out there who will scoop it up in a second, drop the money on it because it's something that means something important to them. All that said, uh, yeah, the big, the big issue I think most people have raised about this unit 
um, is nothing to do with how it's built. It's everything to do with the cost of getting a unit like this. So let's talk about some of those costs and where they lie. Because I can't specifically tell you what Palomino's costs were to produce this, but I can make some assumptions. But those assumptions are gonna simply be based off of what I can see and what I feel the industry norm would be if they didn't go in that direction. So let me kind of explain that. So first of all, uh, a big notable feature on this unit is the fact that it utilizes an aluminum frame. And it's a very thick aluminum frame. I was actually in the process of trying to switch this McHitch out to the coupler that comes on it. ROA Off-Road, who also provided me this unit. They, uh, they are an absolutely great partner to the channel now. Uh, they provide me some pretty awesome units for review and evaluation. Um, ROA Off-Road is right south of Salt Lake City in Utah, and they have another location in South Carolina that actually carries the paws. But I did a big segment out there where I filmed a ton of their units, uh, all off-road focused units, and definitely check them out. I'll put a link in the description. But ROA Off-Road, installed this McHitch in replacement of this hitch or this coupler that comes on the unit. This coupler is a articulating, side to side articulating two and five sixteenths inch coupler that originally was installed on here. And they took it off and put this fully articulating coupler front and back, side and side from McHitch on this unit. But I was gonna take this one off and put the other coupler back on simply because I wanted to use the other coupler with my truck because I think it's more I guess in line with how I would tow versus something like this. But uh, I saw how thick everything is. And this is all quarter inch thick, fully boxed aluminum tubing. So again, you look at this frame, you can see where the A-frame section actually goes through and continues on. And then they have these large steel plates that are all you know bolted and riveted into place to hold it all together. This has one heck of a specialized frame. And when I say that, specialized in the RV world means more expensive because this is not a frame that's available on any other RV or to any other RV manufacturer. This is an exclusively designed frame for the folks at Palomino for the pause unit. What does that mean? That means the frame alone, this aluminum frame on this unit probably costs Palomino as a manufacturer, an RV manufacturer, three to four times more than the frame that's on our Coachman Brookstone. Not even kidding you. The frame that's on that Brookstone is delivered in bulk to the folks at Coachman and they build their floor plans on top of that frame. And yes, the frame is specifically designed for the floor plan that they're gonna be using, but that floor plan is still a very standard kind of generic drop frame design from Lippert specifically for Coachman and that floor plan that they're throwing on top of it. Whereas this frame, is 100% exclusively built for the folks at Palomino. Nobody else is using this frame, which means when they order these frames, not only are they paying more because of the materials, because of how thick and robust the materials are, because of how it's designed, but they're paying more because no other manufacturer is ordering these. They can't order them in bulk and simply say, you know what, this is a the type of frame that's already produced for 50 other RV manufacturers. This frame is exclusive to the folks at Palomino for the pause. And every iteration of this floor plan might require a slightly different frame. So the development cost of this frame, first of all, the fact that they're using incredibly thick walled uh, quarter inch thick aluminum for the framing. Secondly, you can see how everything is kind of tied together. And thirdly, the fact that it has to specifically be engineered just for this one manufacturer, which means they don't have a ton of buying power across multiple brands. They can't open up their own factory to produce just this frame. They have to essentially order these frames as they need them as a specialty component. So that's the first part. So this frame probably, again, is multiple times more expensive than the frame on the Brookstone. Okay, coming around to the suspension. I think you guys knew I was gonna hit this part next. So this suspension was manufactured by Moride using incredibly good components specifically for the Palomino Paws, which means there's no other RV manufacturer producing an RV with this suspension on it. What does that mean? That means this is a very, very expensive suspension system. Uh, just the steel alone, you can see it's all quarter inch thick, utilizes an airbag right there. I don't know what the brand of the airbag is, but then I can certainly see the shocks right there. It has dual shocks at each wheel location, which means there's a total of eight shocks 
And you know what that color means. These are Bilstein shocks, which are not a cheap shock. If you look at like a black series, they have kind of a generic shock on their RVs. If you look at a lot of brands, it's kind of a generic cheap shock. But Palomino took a huge step forward and they decided to go with very high-end shocks. These are the same type of shocks you would get on like a Ram pickup truck with a specialty off-road package. So you get Bilstein shocks at every wheel location, which is eight shocks in total. If you look at each location here, plus the fact that they've trucked it with air so you can use an air valve to fill up other things, you're talking about a suspension system that's probably about as much as the entire frame, suspension, wheel, and tire setup that's on the Brookstone. Probably more than that by a long shot. This suspension system, I have no idea what it actually costs, but if the suspension on our Brookstone, which has the, the Lippert you know, Road Armor upgraded suspension system, which has you know the, the heavier duty leaf springs, the 8K axles, you know all of that stuff, you know, you're probably talking about five grand in total worth of all the components, including the Continental tires that we put on there. If you look at this system right here, you're probably talking at about two to three grand per wheel location. So overall, you're probably looking at about $10,000 to $12,000 worth of suspension on this RV. If you were gonna try to add this to like your fifth wheel or something aftermarket, it would probably be after labor about a $20,000 upgrade or more. Just to give you an idea, a lot of people might say it's ridiculous, it's overkill, but that was the whole point of the Palomino Pause was to give you this ridiculous overkill RV with every conceived, you know, build quality component meeting that that pinnacle of of excellence and i think they've done that and this is just another example of another area where you know specialty frame specialty suspension where a lot of cost can quickly quickly add up so coming around to the back uh, go back and check out one of the videos i did on the interior of this back kind of closet area so this is kind of a a garage space but you know what i can probably open this up real quick So I'm just going to lean around here so you can see all of this. So that is a lot of Battleborn batteries. And that is a lot of Victron solar charging equipment. Plus there's six panels on top of this unit. Now to put that in perspective, it is a much higher end and more massive system than the Go Power system that we put on our Brookstone, which consisted of two 250 amp hour batteries to give us a total of 500 amp hours, as well as two additional panels on top, uh, the IC3000 controller, charger, all of that stuff. And equipment alone on that RV was about $10,000. So. The setup on here is significantly larger, significantly more complex and more robust, and it's tied into the smart Garmin system that actually controls this unit. So again, you're talking probably around 30 grand just in all of these components here. And if you were gonna add this to an RV, you would also have to include labor on top of that, which we're not even talking about. So, it, you know, it, it's not free to put this stuff on equipment. Now, if you've taken into account that the frame costs as much as it does, the suspension costs as much as it does, and all of this stuff in the back and electronics cost as much as it does, quickly you're approaching a number that's going to cost more than your typical Airstream. It's going to cost more than your Brookstone. It's going to cost more than a lot of these other units that you would say might be a better value. And the reason why, again, is because they're using components to build an RV that are entirely specialized. They're entirely custom for a specific RV, which is really, really cool. And I know Victron isn't custom, but it's not Renogy. It's not the brands that you typically would see in a Palomino product or in a lot of other products on, their own, on the market. They are putting in high-end products, including tires, Goodyear Wrangler tires, right? Just... If you wanted to add this swing out system on the back of your RV, right, these components, you'd probably be talking about a system that's probably upwards of about seven, eight hundred dollars just to add it aftermarket to an RV. Look at the back bumper. This looks like the bumper you would get on a Super Duty. This thing is super, super high end, specially built for this RV. That bumper is probably a fourteen hundred dollar bumper if you were going to get it for a vehicle. 
So imagine how much it costs to develop it specifically for the Palomino Paws. Um, if you're gonna talk about the components that go into this RV, there are some components that are a little bit more generic, like the leveling system. We're starting to see auto leveling on travel trailers and other smaller units. Um, that system in itself is about a $2,500 system. So the point I'm making here is that we haven't even gone into the inside of this RV. The sidewall components, the sidewall panels of this RV, how they're designed, are absolutely more expensive than every sidewall panel that goes into the Brookstone. You can probably take every sidewall of a Brookstone, which is roughly 42 feet long and taller, and it's a fraction of the cost that Palomino has to pay to get these sidewalls because of what they're built out of, how they're made, how they're designed. So again, there's so much more that goes into something like this that makes it more expensive than something like this. A lot of folks automatically believe that size in the RV world means more expensive. And that's not the case. They make 42 foot long fifth wheels all day long that are budget entry level fifth wheels that have a lower cost to them simply because they're trying to specifically target a certain price point. With this unit, price point wasn't what they were targeting. They were trying to target a lifestyle and a type of RV that certain people are expecting and looking for and they really spared no expense. They used some components that are pretty common. There's some Lippert components, there's some Moride components, there's some other components that absolutely make up this RV that aren't overly custom or overly specialized, but those are only because they're readily available and they work and they do the job well and they have a low failure rate. That's really what it comes down to. But designing and engineering all the cabinetry out of aluminum, it looks like wood, but it's all aluminum designing everything on the inside of this RV, tying it into a complete smart system to where it's controlled through the Garmin controls. So you can control your airbags, your lighting, your electrical system, your water, everything. So it's controlled through Garmin, either from the tablet that's inside or your smartphone and getting all the systems to tie in together, plus all the components on the inside, including the 3D printed walls, the very high-end bathroom, the, the residential refrigerator, the cooktop that you typically see in a Riverstone, those types of components, to get all of that stuff tied in together is not inexpensive. And when you know, I tell you how much this, this unit actually runs, and let's just say it's between $140,000 and $200,000, depending on how it's equipped, the reality behind that is, you're getting a unit that is far more expensive to build than probably even your higher end brands, only because the components, the customization that needs to go into it, all of the technology that they've integrated into it. And this is truly an example of size isn't relative to price. Now it could be because if you wanted to make this thing super long and super big, you wanted to make a 30 foot version of it and you wanted to have three axles, you know, yeah, that's absolutely gonna be relative to price. But on something like this, even at its length, which the body of it itself is only about 22 feet long, the overall build of this unit is superior and is more complex and uses higher end materials than just about any RV I've ever seen. And it is expensive. Nobody's denying that. Nobody's saying that this is going to be a unit that just any Joe Blow can go out and buy. It's not. This is a very, very specialized unit. Um, I can't imagine they're going to make a ton of these each year. And that in itself has to justify a higher price because you have fewer units selling, which means the profit margin on it, or at least how much they make on it, has to justify producing them in the first place. That's just common economics with any product that's manufactured. But the reality is, is this is like the, the TRX or the Raptor of the RV world. Very custom, overkill for what most people would use. You can still go out and buy your typical Palomino. You can still go out and buy your typical off-road inspired Ember. You can still buy these typical units, but this doesn't really compete against those. This competes in an entirely different category of a lifestyle choice, the type of RV you would buy because you plan on doing a few things with it. One of those is demonstrating that you can have the most crazy capable you know, RV out there, but then the other one is to actually have the most cr crazy capable RV out there. And then you also have to realize that the weight and the size of this thing do generally dictate that you have to tow it with a heavier duty vehicle. So you're gonna need something like, like an AT4, 
you know, GMC, or you're going to need something like uh, some of these new trucks that are coming out with super off-road packages in a three-quarter ton and a one-ton package, like a Ram Rebel or a Power Wagon. You're going to need something pretty dang heavy duty to be able to handle this type of weight as well. Um, that said, though, I hope this video kind of points out specifically why something like this Palomino Paws may not be for everybody. A lot of people are going to say, man, that price is insane. But again, this is typically for the buyer who has a spare $150,000 laying around and they want the best of the best and they're willing to pay to have every conceivable upgraded component included on their RV um, and they want to be able to show it off. That's what it comes down to. Again, it's not for everybody, um, but if you see these on the road, if you see these at you know RV parks or at off-grid locations, overlanding, things like that, you'll probably see a certain type of tow vehicle towing it, and you'll probably understand why somebody specifically wanted this unit. Uh, I think most people want the unit, but I think, again, from a price point perspective, most people can't financially justify it. But what I can almost guarantee you is a lot of people can, and I can bet that they're not going to have any problem selling these units. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.